Hello, people. I'm going to talk to you about something that I just found out. Uh, I would, everybody was wondering why. A lot, well, a lot of people were wondering why um, Gravano was cutting back on his show and doing videos and stuff. And it's, quite, it's becoming quite obvious now. Uh, he made an announcement today. It was a pretty big announcement. Uh, it's about uh, one of the biggest rats ever getting uh, in bed with another rat. A matter of fact, uh, it's a coup. Totally takes control of everything in this in the mob genre. Um, and he's only talking about having uh, the big time guys that were out there, the big time rats. He's not going to deal with a lot of these little rats. And as you see in mob tube, there's a lot of little rats. But he's gonna uh, he's gonna deal with the bigger rats, and um, let me just play a video from today, fair use, and uh, what Sammy has to say. It's uh, quite fascinating, to be honest with you. Okay, let me put this up here. Okay, one minute, please, and here we go. Well, uh, Phil Leonetti was a very, very good friend of mine. He became the underboss of Philadelphia. Put the uh, closer to my mouth. Uh, any, any more in my mouth, I'd be up my, uh, like I'm kissing it. Man, oh man. It almost feels like I'm gay, you know, with this stick, fucking thing stuck in my mouth. I can't talk and have this thing this close. But anyway, uh, yeah, Phil Leonetti, who was a very good friend of mine, he was the underboss. He became the underboss of Philadelphia. I was extremely close with his uncle, Nicky Scarfo. Um, I actually was in prison with him for about two, three years. I just did uh, an interview, uh, a sit down. It was that wasn't an interview. It wasn't like the thing uh, Patrick Big David did with Michael Francis. Me and him had a sit down, and. Um, we filmed it. We're editing it. I'm going to come out with it. I am now about to do another one of those sit downs with Phil. I'm trying to make the arrangements where we sit down. So he's talking about Phil Leonetti. So Phil Leonetti, who is very hard to get him to come out and do anything. Uh, he'll do a show here and there is now on Sammy. It's going to be doing it with Sammy Gavano and they're going to be doing other stuff together. So whoever planned this whole thing with Sammy has really done a really good job because he's doing things that are much bigger than his show was. Uh, and now um, uh, he's going to be with Phil Leonetti, Leonetti, who's very, very hard to get on here, like I said. So let's go on and play some more of this. And we, we're going to put it out every week. Different sit downs is from trying to get heavyweight people so you can really enjoy it and see how a real sit down happens um so phil and his partner and me we're working on that we're calling it table in the back right so the thing will be table in the back a sit down with michael Francis. another week it'll be philly and eddie i'm trying to get heavyweights people who don't bullshit people who know the mob legitimately that's the Hear what he said, people. People that don't bullshit. People that know the mob 100%. And we got a lot of guys around here that tell, tell a lot of tall tales. Uh, very low-level guys that are making themselves bigger than what they are. Personally, I don't care for Sammy at all. Same with Phil Leonetti. Uh, they're both rats. They both put a lot of men in prison. Phil Le Leonetti... Uh, uh, admitted to murdering uh, or being part of a 10 of 10 murders. And uh, so did Sammy. Well, 21 with Sammy. So you're talking 31 murders between these two that these two were somehow involved in. They ratted. They ratted out big boss, bosses. As we know, uh, Sammy Gavano uh, put John Gotti away. And Nikki Scarfo was put away by Phil Leonetti. And, uh, here we are. We're, we're at this point now where these guys are going to be doing a show together. So expect to see them together more than once. And they're going to have sit down. Sammy's even talking about having a sit down with, a, with Rudolph Giuliani. Think about that. 
who would have ever thought? He despises Rudolph Giuliani. Rudolph Giuliani despises him. And now you're talking about them two having a sit down. This is what this has all become. This YouTube thing has become big money for these guys. And that's why they're doing this. It's finances. You know, and that's, you know, and uh, people know that uh, Phil Leonetti uh, murdered Vincent Falcone. Then when he went to prison, he goes to prison, he gets a huge sentence. Then he gets out. And what does he do? He married Vincent Falcone's girlfriend. You know, so right there, you know, that tells you a lot about Leonetti. And uh, Leonetti received 45 years and he received the sentence and then he flipped. He agreed to uh, testify after, uh, against Scarfo right after that and the family. And that's when he uh, he admitted participating in all those murders. Uh, and when he uh, got out, um, he married the former girlfriend of uh, Falcone. Uh, and let me show you this. This is uh, what he did. Um, this is Falcone. This is the guy he murdered. And now he's with, well, he's been with for quite some time, his girlfriend. So we can only imagine what's behind there. And Phil, Phil Leonetti, they called him Crazy Phil. Far from crazy people. This guy has thought these things out thoroughly. Uh, and a matter of fact, out of all the rats, he's the one that tried to stay hidden the most. Uh, he went, he did interviews, but a lot of times he didn't show his, well, a couple times he didn't show his face. Or he would show up in one of these famous wigs right here. And that's what he would wear, that wig. And, uh, you know, you're not, you're, you're talking, this guy w w was very close uh, uh, to Nicky Scarfo and put him away. Family, he put him away. And so now Sammy's coming out and saying that they've always been buddies. Uh, at the, and they both decided to uh, rat when they knew that they were going to be facing a lot of time. So can you imagine this, people? Did you ever think that you would see today that two guys, high-level rats like these two, guys that put away big guys, would be out in the public like this doing these shows? Sammy just doesn't give a hoot. He's out in the public. He doesn't care if you know where he lives. It's obvious Phil, and, Phil Leonetti is different. He doesn't want anybody. He, he's really big into his privacy. Uh, but, you know, when you think about it, though, uh, maybe he's done with the privacy because he sees the money that these, these people like uh, Sammy and uh, maybe I'm not sure what, uh, Mickey, what Mikey Scars is doing right now. Nobody really knows, uh, but I'm sure he's doing okay. And it, he's only going to start making more and more. And then you got Francis. He, he has a gold mine. So who's ever taken control of Sammy's show has done a wonderful job for him because they basically took him away from his library of uh, tall tales. That's what I call it. Some of them were accurate and a, a great deal of them were not. But his library to this day gets thousands of views every day. Now he's doing these lives. He comes out in his lives. He talks in the lives. And the lives are getting better and better. And he even changed his background on the lives. It looks much more professional. So it's obvious that he has some serious people that are uh, with him right now. And, you know, the man's 78 years old. And let me take this down. Okay, I'm sorry about this. I just kept this up too long. The man's 78 years old, and he wants to leave a legacy. You know, his legacy should be that he put a lot of people away in prison. You know, people could say, okay, he was angry at John Gotti, but he put away a lot more people than John Gotti. He put away good friends of his. You know, people that had nothing to do with John Gotti, he put away. Then he had put away a lot of people that had something to do with John Gotti. But you're talking about him and you're talking about Phil Leonetti. Same thing. Phil Leonetti put away people that he was close to, friends, family. He did not care. So now you're going to have these two guys get in the room and tell you what the things that they did in their life. Can you imagine the stories between the two of them? Uh, and I think that, you know, Sammy Gravano understands what these low-level rats that are coming out are doing uh, to the genre with their false tales. 
Uh, there's a couple of them that are real, but in general, most of them are just low level guys that wore wires and uh, whatever else they did. And we see them everywhere. We see dozens of them. But the reality is only a couple of these uh, rats are ones that people that want that uh, people, other people want to hear. People want to hear Sammy Gravano, whether you like him or not. Uh, personally, me, no, I don't like him. Uh, I, I really don't want to deal with him ever since uh, the whole thing with Alan Kaiser. But you know what? Sammy couldn't give two shits if I want to deal with him. I'm just a little guy. He's a big guy. So it's going to be interesting to see where Phil Leonetti does, takes this. Does he come out and do a couple things with Sammy? Or does he come out and decide to go to the same route as Sammy and build up a library? And that's where it's at, the libraries, people, that these guys build. Because when they're gone, those libraries are going to be worth a lot of money. And with history, people are going to judge history by the libraries that guys like Gravano and Leonetti build. It's it, it's amazing. You know, when I heard this, I was like, the last thing I've expected to hear Sammy say that he's teaming up with Phil and Leonetti. Didn't, didn't see that coming. I don't think most people seen it coming. And uh, but it's there. You know, you got to remember uh, when uh, Leonetti came out, everybody thought he was, you know, his nickname, Crazy Leonetti. But he wrote a book, bestseller book. He talked about the uh, five families. He talked about the uh, commission in his book, and um, I think it was called the violent, uh, violent crime, the bloody fall of La Costa Nostra. Um, but the actual bloody fall of La Costa Nostra were guys like Sammy Gravano and Phil Leonetti. These are the guys that took it down uh, because they put away the guys around them in power, the guys above them. Uh, and they put away the most powerful members of these families. You know, Leonetti was from Philadelphia. Very, very uh, wickedly mean. You had the killing of Bruno. And then you had uh, Mickey Scarford from that point just went to war with everybody. Started murdering people. Paranoia. And uh, I think at one point, uh, Phil Leonetti figured that he might be next. He uses that as an excuse on why he ratted on uh mickey scarpo so you people when underneath this tell me what you think you know because uh this is just fascinating stuff every time that you know you, you see me 78 years old people and he's putting together this thing that he's building and this is a man that was in hiding this is a man that started a huge drug empire down in, in Arizona. And, this, and he, he went to prison for almost 20 years. Gets out. Starts this. So what did he do? Pick up the phone and say, hey, Phil, you want to make some money like I want to make? Let's get together. Because you know that when Sammy speaks to Phil Leonetti, everybody's going to be watching it. More so than when he talked to Francis. I mean, Francis wasn't considered a killer, whereas uh, Crazy Phil is a killer, was a killer. And now they're going to tell their war stories together. So anybody that thinks that Sammy Gravano regrets anything he's done in his life, he does not. He has no regrets whatsoever of what he did in his life. He doesn't care about whatever he did in his life. Uh, he's living off of it now and making a lot of money off of it. And he's going to do more and more of this stuff. He's going to, until he drops dead people, which could be tomorrow or maybe 10 years. The man, they said he had illnesses and issues with his health. Doesn't seem like he has too many. I mean, he just keeps on going. And, you know, that's, you know, here he is with Nikki Scarfo. And this is the man Phil Leonetti put away. He testified against him because he was looking at a huge sentence and he couldn't take it. Just like Sammy did with John Gotti. Huge sentence, they couldn't take it. And now, people now, the younger generation d does not understand who these guys were, these two guys were, and what they did. You know, to them, they're like some kind of cult heroes or uh, uh, mob heroes. 
And these aren't the guys that people should be looking up to. But unfortunately, because the real guys don't come on here, these are the guys they look up to. And it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse and worse. And then Sammy's going to be talking to every. Sammy's going to go out and look for the big guys to talk to. It makes you wonder, will Sammy be talking to Mikey Scars? Because he says he wants to talk to real guys. How many real guys that ratted are out there? I'm talking about real guys. I'm not talking about maybe an associate or some guy that uh, says he did stuff, but there's no evidence that he did it. You know, um, I don't see Sammy bringing on Jimmy Calandra. Let's put it that way. Um, he's going for these high-level guys. So, people, tell me what you think underneath. If you like this video, please hit the like. And I, I just thought that you guys would get a kick out of this. Take care. I'm going to be doing a live tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.